What's up everyone? This is Connery from uh, Out of Work Outdoors and this video is going to be answering one of the questions that one of our viewers posted directly and a lot of other questions that were very very much in the same category and it is uh, how do you go out and not have a really bad trip even though it is already a bad trip how do you salvage it or or how what does one of your bad trips look like you know things along that nature because at one time we asked uh, if you guys wanted to see our bad trips or not and we never filmed the bad trips we only uh, give you bits and clips and raw footages every now and then and we do more on the bad trips we do more of just photos on our Facebook and Instagram pictures and things like that but uh, we were fishing this time we weren't very prepared to ask for what we were getting ourselves into so this is how we managed the weekend uh, to let you guys know we are from Oklahoma and we went to the beach which means it's a 10 hour drive for us and it was a family trip of a bunch of cousins and things like that and we went all the way down to Surfside Beach out in Texas it's a 10 hour drive like I said and um, didn't do a lot of research I knew that there was redfish Spec trout, some tunas, that type of basic, you know, ocean fish, but didn't know really what to bring. Um, a lot of, before we went there, we knew just from a little bit of internet research that uh, that trouts were good on live shrimp. Basically, everything was good on live shrimp. Everybody used live shrimp on a bobber setup. And to me, that that that's just really boring fishing. I, I really don't like to wait around and watch the bobber, you know, move around and drop. It's really, it's really sad, in my opinion, if you're fishing like that. That's not really fishing. That's more like trapping. So that for me was an option, but it was an option I didn't really want to do. Uh, to me, I'd rather be, you know, fishing, like, you know, cranking and burning that type of stuff. So that's what we ended up doing. That's the first thing we ended up doing. So. The, the trip starts out like this. Friday, 4 o'clock, get off work. Me and Hybrid get in the truck and we go down there. 10-hour uh, drive, 2 o'clock in the morning, we get there. Uh, late night barbecue and a couple drinks. 4.30 hits, it's off to the jetty. Surfside Beach has a really long jetty. It goes out like a quarter mile. And we, our beach house that we rented was only about 100 yards away from the jetty so it's really it's actually pretty cool and it would it's gonna play into some effect on me here and here in a little bit so anyways 4.30 mean hybrid killer we go out packing our medium rods uh, and we all of us we bought three rods a light rod a medium and a super badass surf rod so without knowing what we're gonna encounter ourselves into uh, go out well I went out with a medium rod because I was throwing these uh, bomber uh, cranks bomber jerk baits and we've already done a review on that the the magnum sig long you know, long a magnums and I was throwing two different colors of black chrome and a uh, pink chrome and I didn't catch anything to be honest with you, I didn't catch anything it's been like an hour out there I didn't catch anything I was expecting something to happen um, but when we got out there I found something that was really interesting. The, the fishermen out there, they actually had these big spotlights. I mean, like giant spotlights that you see off of, uh, even off of some boats, right? Like ships. And they were they were shooting it. It's a focused beam that went into the water. And this these lights took up so much power, you needed like a 4,000 watt generator to, to shoot two of these. That's how much power these guys were using. Anyways. I got we got there. We're fishing around the lights because we crappie fish too, and we know that bait is attract to light in the pitch dark. So we're fishing around these lights. So most of these fishermen are they're just sleeping on the jetty at this time. So we happen to just you know kind of sneak around these lights and cast around the lights, and uh, no takers. You can see shrimp and you can see the little fish jumping around around the light, but there you didn't see any big fish. You'll see like macro like that chasing these fish, but. You know your dreams of a 28 inch plus redfish one there, and that's kind of that's what we did. We fished for an hour, no bites, and then we just observed for another hour, see what the the other guys, the other anglers are doing. And mind you, this is pitch black out, 
and we're walking around with flashlights and they, there's these uh, light stands that people are using to light up the water. Talked to a couple people, kind of observed a little bit. Uh, most people were sleeping so we didn't really get to talk to them but at that point we kind of knew that our big fish dreams were over because it just wasn't going to happen. Uh, like the people that were there weren't even targeting big fish and at that point we kind of knew that just due to the trash that was all, all around the area that it was a high, high, highly pressured area. Highly pressured area. Um, so came back to the house 100 yards away. Um, power nap two hours, woke up, went back, tried a different technique. Uh, this time I went out, I, I switched species basically. Forget about the reds, forget about the speckled trouts and things like that. I wanted to catch myself a flounder of some sorts. Uh, so I went out, threw out half ounce jigs, bucktails, or half ounce jig with a bucktail with, with a Berkeley gulp tied onto it, and I jigged for about two hours, nothing. I did get a lot of pecs, which I would set the hook on and I would get nothing. Okay, so that's why I knew there were little fish. And Hybrid Killer, he was throwing all these other things and... Oh, and at this point in time, basically, um, everybody knew that the trip, the awesome epic trip that you were hoping for, it wasn't going to happen. So you just got to, at this point, you have to salvage what you can get. And as the sun was, you know, straight up in the air, more and more and more and more people came onto this jetty. Um, i thinking, in my mind, at least 100 people were fishing off of this jetty minimum 100 people actual fishermen not including the people that walk around were fishing off the jetty so it's a highly highly pressured area everybody was throwing live bait and they were catching fish too but they were just really really small fish that were not of size and that to me says i don't want to throw shrimp one it's expensive and two it doesn't keep catch illegal sized fish so and in my mind i knew that lore is always they usually always deliver a bigger bite. So it stayed with the lowers. And I hate to say it, but at this point, like I said, everybody was pretty disappointed that the epic, you know, epic trips that you see on YouTube and even on our channel, it wasn't going to happen. So you have to salvage whatever you can get. So everybody started either switching to uh, squid drop shot style squid cast it out and feel the bite or they try everything else they had in their top their tackle box and at this point the mentality of don't give up really kicks in and the mentality of your team searching that search mode turns on okay so if you don't know what i'm talking about go watch our other video where we explain to you how to catch more fish and don't suck or suck less so I'll put up the annotations here. Go watch that if you haven't watched it. And I'll, I'll wait for you know a couple seconds here and watch we wait for you to come back. Okay, did you watch it? Okay, that's good. All right, so once you get that mentality in your team, if your team hasn't given up and they still are trying to pursue that specific species, then everybody needs to be thrown a different type of lure. I don't care what it is. Throw it out. Maybe you'll, you know, the most unsuspecting lore might be the lore that day. So, uh, so far, nothing, right? I'm on a jig, I'm on a swim bait, I'm on a bucktail. It's not getting the results I want. The shrimp, the live shrimp works because that's kind of a plan C, if you would say. And you have to come up with a plan B as well. So, plan B at this point was switch over to the squid because squid is squid. Is a lot cheaper than the shrimp and it will deliver the same same time of fish so we we're gonna do a squid if we couldn't come up with a plan a so now pieces of the puzzle will start to build and if in case you've already missed it uh, I've already given away two tips or two pieces of the puzzle one big fish dream is gone two bucktails swim jigs are out of the picture and I didn't know about this until the morning times. Well, I saw it in the spotlights, but the water was super murky. Visibility in the water is probably a foot to two feet at max. So, you know, 
a lot of the lures you're used to fishing with, you know, that you've brought, forget about it. You've eliminated a lot of those lures strictly due to the colors or uh, the main reasons why they probably won't work. Um, so everyone's trying everything, right? Um, I even threw out a gate blade, didn't work out. Uh, Chaos, you have seen him on the channel before in the Sooner Lake and the, uh, and the, uh, the hybrid, the epic hybrid video at the at Ulaga Dam, uh, he happens to tie on a Rapala X wrap. He casts it out, maybe 20 casts coming in, trying to figure out the patterns. I guess he hooks on something, brings it to the coast, or brings it to the, the, the shoreline, and it was a huge uh, sea trout. I think it was he, according to his recollection, it was probably a 20 inch sea trout, right around that area. But it came off. So as soon as he told me about that, that was another piece of the puzzle. See, that's three pieces of the puzzle now if you want to catch the specific fish. Okay, so they're hitting on these little crankbaits or little jerkbaits. x wrap is a jerkbait. Rapala x wrap. And the tide was starting to go down. So we continued to fish for another hour or so. And this is, gets to the point where the tide is at its lowest and it's starting to come back up. I start seeing a lot of little bait fish, like inch, inch and a half. It's kind of like wide, but it's really stubby, short, almost like a mini piranha. There's a lot of them running around the shore, and once in a while, they'll something will blow up on them. You won't see the fish, but you can tell there's something chasing them because because of the way the little fish scatters. And so that's like tip number three: be very observant of your surroundings because that just completed you know, most of the pieces to your puzzle right there. Uh, big fish, forget about it. You've just eliminated a lot of your tackle uh, choices on step number two due to the water clarity and things like that. And just randomly trying all types of lures. I mean, your, my entire team was trying everything. And you found something that worked. That one thing that worked was a small jerkbait. And number four is to confirm the small jerkbait is of the little fishes that were scattering on the shore. So you knew at that point that the fish were either uh, feeding on shrimp or they were feeding on these little uh, fish. So we threw out, Hybrid Killer had Savage Gear shrimps on and they were the, I think they were the four inch ones. He was casting those out. He was doing the retrieves and it wasn't hitting on the shrimps for some reason, but it was hitting on these other Rapala trick baits. But you had to burn it. And that's part five or six to the puzzle. We lost track, sorry. And that was the pattern. I mean, that's what people refer to it as when they, they call it pattern fishing. And once you get the pattern down, duplicate it. Everybody needs to be on that pattern. So what happens? I don't have my pattern on me. <laughs> I don't. I didn't bring my jerk baits. Jerk baits left at the house. So basically I had to cut this trip short, the second trip out on a Saturday. And this is only around 1 o'clock. So we fished for about two hours. It was, it was pretty hot. So came back to the house, had to regroup, grab more stuff, change the gear out of the bag. All right, so, so we we got one fish that we knew gave us enough information to pattern a technique off of it. So basically, the technique what is going to be is light line, light rod and reel setup, and small jerk baits, small jerk baits, three inch jerk baits. So I come back to mustache, I grab Missouri Crystal Minnows, three inch, three and a half inches. Uh, I'm on the redhead and I'm on the black top crystal minnow. And those are pretty hot. I grab I happen to bring my two Lucky Craft SP minnows as well. Uh, no SP pointers. SP pointers or pointer SPs. And they're all in the three inches, two and a half, three inch range. And I go out, I tie since I have more experience on the crystal minnow. This is the third trip. Go back out. Same day. Three trips. That's, that's a lot. That's that's some die hard. See, that's the other part of the mentality. You cannot give up. As soon as you give up, you know, forget about it. Fishing's over. Uh, a couple of the guys did give up and never did catch another fish for the entire weekend. But if you keep a, uh, a focused mind and you keep on wanting to, you know, uh, put this puzzle together, you're going to get it together and you're going to catch some fish. So what happened is I go back out. And this is like the... Uh, 
and the low, here's the other thing most of our fish were caught during low tide so low tide or halfway to low or halfway up from low never at the high tide point so I go out and it's like low going back up high and I kid you not 10 casts boom I hook up on a macro and that's when I knew that this is this is like around four o'clock it's not even during anyway during prime time so that's when I knew that the pattern I was thinking about is working so hybrid killer and chaos follow me out and as soon as I tell them okay because I've been asking uh, chaos how did he retrieve that one retrieve where he caught the, the trout as well and he said he's just casting out he's just reeling really fast and he hit so I knew at that point that if you were going to catch fish it was on a burning technique like it wasn't um, it wasn't going to bite on a slow retrieve because I was asking hybrid as well earlier during the, the second trip he said that he, he had some followers but they were not committed and I asked him how fast was retrieve and he says he's a medium fast and he got three followers but no takers and then I was observing how people were um, um, retrieving and were they throwing jerks too or they just straight retrieves and I was looking at uh, hybrids and we were jerking like this and retrieving medium speed like you would jerk for a uh, for bass during the um, springtime that didn't work because I was watching chaos he was just strictly you know fast crank all the way in and once in a while a little tap little tap but you know 90% of the time it was a fast burning it's a fast burn so that's what I did too and I caught and the thing is I added a little bit to it because I knew that because from the from the little fish I saw before where they were getting attacked by something. It was right off the shore, like five yards off, uh, right where the water was bubbling, where the waves were crashing. Uh, I knew that there was fish around the area. So what I would do is I had a, a technique I came up with, and it was you fire your lure out as far as you can. As soon as it hits the water, for some reason, I think that splash kind of attracts them too. As soon as it hits the water, burn it back. as pretty much pretty fast. You know, what you would consider fast, go a little bit faster. Bring it into it until you think it's about 10 yards off the the, uh, the shore and then just jerk it in like you know, like bass fishing jerk it in and a lot of times we get a hit on that. So that's the technique we came up with and I told them about it and that day the technique actually worked out. I mean we got a total of, well let me see, let's count my, my hits. I had one sea trout that was legal size two mackerels legal size and probably five other hits that just didn't hook up because when you're burning it that fast you can't expect to get a really good hookup okay and chaos got a sea trout and a macro and like four other I know I think you have more than that four or six or whatever miss hit so we knew that there was a reaction strike going on and no one else knew about it besides us so that's what we got um, and a lot of people, you know, at this, at this time, you would say, okay, you should slow down your retrieve because if you're not getting a lot of hookups, you should slow retrieve down. I tried that. didn't work. When you slow it down, they will follow the Lord. They won't commit to it. So that is a very, very fine line that you have to follow as well. You have to constantly tell yourself the only way you're going to catch fish is if you stay true to your pattern. The pattern was to burn the Lord. And that's what we did, and we got fish that night. Saturday night comes around. Uh, there was a macro, and well, I released my two macro, but uh, Chaos kept his. He wanted to try it. I'm not a big macro fan, so I'd always release them. Um, but yeah, two sea trouts, legal size, and a macro legal size in the pot. Served, served to 30 people that stayed at the house. It was pretty good. It was awesome. And the next day, went back out, tried the same thing. But the, for some reason, the pattern like seemed to have changed a little. Like they weren't that aggressive, and they weren't even biting as much. So the pattern wasn't even that good the next day. So we had to build up another pattern on Sunday. We didn't actually come up with a really good pattern. Uh, on Sunday, we only managed to catch uh, four macros and one sea trout that was legal. We did have three other sea trouts to hit on the X wrap, and. The hooks suck on the X-Wrap or something because it just wouldn't hold on to the fish. Uh, that plus the uh, the fish had teeth and Chaos didn't have a leader on it or any type of leader. He had 8-pound mono. So I guess it was cutting the mono or something like that. 
So we lost a couple of fish like that. Yeah, no big deal. Um, we also uh, figured that pattern. So that was the pattern for the weekend. And it wasn't a great pattern. It was... It was, it was an average pattern, in my opinion. It was something that worked. It'll put food on the table. That'll get you the... You know, get the blood kind of boiling. You know, but it wasn't an epic, epic, epic trip. And that's the type of stuff that where if you gave up in the morning on Saturday, your entire Saturday would have been ruined. Your entire Sunday would have been ruined. Okay, so for those guys that are that want to know how we keep going, that's how we keep going. Figure out a pattern. Once you figure out a pattern, stick to it. Once the pattern is off modified a little bit and you're bound to catch some fish it might not be the best trip but you'll salvage your trip and remember I was telling you you have a plan A plan B and plan, plan C well plan A was for trophy fish well we call it trophy fish because it's the fish that are harder to catch okay and plan B is a you just want to rip some lips and plan C is what everybody's doing because that was life live shrimp Live shrimp's expensive. I don't, I'd rather eat shrimp than fish. So if you bought shrimp, I'd just eat the shrimp. I don't, I don't know about you guys. So plan B was actually put into place in the back of your head already on Saturday morning when I was jigging and nothing was hitting. And what was hitting was really small. And uh, 47 was actually right beside me. And he was uh, casting the squid. Same spots I was jigging through. And actually, I, I got a couple of hits. I told him to cast into the spot and see what it was. And he actually catch one. It was a pinfish. Pinfish about that big. And we actually threw it back. Okay, so so I knew at that point that was plan B. I mean, that was, if you guys want to rip some lips for fun, that was the one. I mean, they're not going to pull hard or anything, but that was the one. And, yeah, that's, that's, that's plan B right there. So pack a squid and rip some lips. So basically what we did was... On Sunday, after we figured out that our plan A was diminishing, and I think I kind of think about it, I think it's because there's a uh, sharks and dolphins came into the area, and they must have scared off those fish. Because on Saturday, the days on the day where we were, uh, that technique was very effective. There were no signs of sharks, and there were no signs of dolphins in the very close area. Dolphins were out more of the wide open ocean, and we didn't see a lot of them. But on Sunday, we saw a lot of sharks. A lot of sharks, we didn't see them, but uh, a lot of anglers caught a lot, like four or five sharks in the general area that we were fishing in. And dolphins were chasing something within 100 yards. So, yeah, I think, I think you know, big fish eat smaller fish. So they were probably trying to eat up these uh, sea trout as well. So they must have gotten their ass kicked and they left the area. That's why we couldn't catch any. So... You know, by that by this time it's already been you know a couple hours in the afternoon on Sunday, and uh, just wanted to rip some lips at that point. You know, it's kind of like oh, what the heck? You know, it's like the sun's starting to go down, six o'clock hits. Let's just rip some lips for fun. So bring out the the little rod again, and tie on a fluorocarbon leader that's retarded ten foot long. Usually I never tie one that's uh, that's that long, and Texas rig it with a small hook and squid and since since we figured that out on Saturday we had to go buy even smaller hooks because these these fish have really we're talking like bluegill size uh, fish with small uh, mouths so you get all these little hooks and then squid on it fire it out and just wait for the bite and no kidding every time you feel that the sinker is sinking to the bottom as soon as it hits the bottom it's tick 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 and you to the hook and in about an hour two hours we brought in 30 of these pinfish between mainly two guys pretty good um, some of you might say that's not good because I could have done that in like 15 minutes true could have but the spot we fished in was really really snaggy it was all the way at the end I if you're if you hate snags don't go fish all the way at the end because you're just gonna get snagged up and we lost a lot of sinkers and a lot of line and things like that. And you could say half the time was spent just tying leaders. But I, I, it was at the point where we have already found fish and we didn't want to continue searching for a spot that had fished with less snags. Uh, so we just ended up fishing that spot. 
And I brought home about 30 pinfish. There was no limit on it according to the regulations. So I brought that back to the beach house. And that was that was the trip. I mean, I'll flash up some footage and hopefully you guys enjoy it. But uh, So you can see that these are the fish that we've personally caught. But that is the trip. That is a... I would say that was one of our bad trips that we had. And that's how you cope with it. But you just have to grind through it. And, I mean, the whole entire time we did get two two good hits. We never saw a fish, but two good hits. Hybrid Killer is always a big old big go home guy. He has a, a mullet rigged on and some big took it. Peel and drag. Better than what you guys see in our other videos. Broke off. I think it was a shark. You didn't have no metal leaders on it, so I think it was a shark or something with teeth. Um, Chaos I also had one that when he went to set the hook, it was just a like a, almost an effortless snap, and it just just went. Don't know what happened to it. But that was a recap from our Memorial Weekend uh, fishing trip. If you guys went fishing too, let us know in the comments below. You guys probably had a better fishing trip than we did. And um, yeah, that that that's our uh, that's our fishing trip. That's one of our bad fishing trips, if you uh, if you must know. All right, guys. See you next time. All right. So after a whole day of fail, I figured out what they're hitting on. They're all chasing these little minnows. So we got a Yozuri crystal minnow. There it is. That type of minnow. Uh, crystal minnow. We got ourselves a little. Looks to be a macro. All right, so the second fish of the day on Lucky Craft SP Minu winner. There it is. I'll keep it. I'm just gonna let it go. All right, guys. Update: We got to me and my fishing guys. We got three uh, sea trouts, and I got all of mine on the uh, Lucky Craft uh, SP Minu. I guess. Damn it, it's that stupid black background with a stupid red frog again. That means the video is over. But I really do like this video, so I think I might just subscribe, like, and share this video with all my friends. And don't forget to share your daily catches with us on Facebook or on Instagram.